okay let's continue to talk about menopause okay how to diagnose menopause first the, the first thing to do is history okay in history we look at symptoms what are the symptoms of menopause of course the first and the most important is amenorrhea for more than for one year okay amenorrhea then we divide uh, symptoms of menopause into three categories acute intermediate symptoms and late symptoms acute symptoms like amenorrhea for example okay and for example the most important symptoms are vasomotor symptoms vasomotor symptoms like what like hot flushes what is hot flushes it is unpredictable a profuse sweating and sensation of heat the woman will feel a sensation of heat on her uh, uh, face on neck and uh, the upper trunk okay so it's very bad feeling the hot uh, flushes depression okay and emotional liability these psychological symptoms are prominent in menopause okay so take care of depression hot flushes insomnia sleeping disorders so psychological and sleeping disorders insomnia sweating sweating is associated with hot flushes okay and the path of physiology of hot flushes is hypothalamic thermoregulatory center a problem okay it's a problem with hypo hypothalamic thermoregulatory these are the acute symptoms of a uh, menopause vasomotor symptoms the most important hot flushes don't forget depression somnia sweating and so on okay intermediate symptoms like urinary symptoms okay frequency urgency urinary incontinence something like things like that okay late complications which are important like osteoporosis osteoporosis and the cause behind osteoporosis after menopause is that estrogen regulate osteoclast activity and when we lose estrogen after menopause the, then the women are at increasing risk of osteoporosis and actually about 15 percent will pay of patient postmenopausally will have osteoporosis in five to seven years and 50 percent 50 percent will have osteopenia 15 percent osteoporosis and 50 percent osteopenia so it's important a late complication of menopause cvs symptoms okay and why the risk for cvs increase the same cause loss of estrogen uh, will lead to cvs problems because estrogen used to uh, effect on high density lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein by rising the high density lipoprotein the good uh, cholesterol and lowering the bad or the low density lipoprotein okay so CVS problem increases, osteoporosis, muscle and joint pain for the same cause, estrogen decreasing, and pelvic prolapse, okay, pelvic organ prolapse due to muscle weakness, of course. So these are the acute, the intermediate, and the late symptoms of uh, menopause. Now, this is the first point to diagnose menopause, the symptoms of menopause. Amnuria, don't forget amnuria. Then we move to physical examination. What we can, can we see in physical examination? Breast atrophy is very important. Some patients come with breast atrophy, vaginal, cervical, and urethral atrophy also, which may cause a vaginal bleeding. Actually, it's the most common cause of postmenopausal vaginal bleeding, vaginal, uterine, cervical, urethral atrophy. Okay. After physical examination, we move to investigations what to do investigation first of all you have to suspect beta hcg even though if the patient is an old patient at a menopause age you have always to suspect 
a pregnancy when you see amenorrhea okay thyroid function test should be done because hyper and hyperthyroidism causes some irregularities in the menstrual cycle prolactin levels for the same cause and fsh level we said that in menopause fsh levels will increase okay so uh, above 40 is a diagnostic is diagnostic okay is an investigation to be done and other routine investigations now let's move to the very important thing the management of menopause what are the lines of management of menopause first we have to modify lifestyle we have to healthy lifestyle walking is the is the best exercise to to be done after menopause okay good feeding you have to take care of your food and so on okay so this is the healthy lifestyle the, the first line of management of menopause then the second line is psychological support one of the symptoms of menopause is depression okay i told you depression insomnia sleeping disorders right? so you have to give the patient the psychological support okay and the third line of treatment is hormone replacement therapy or estrogen replacement therapy okay hormone replacement therapy estrogen replacement therapy a combination uh, hormone replacement therapy is a combination of estrogen and progestin uh, this is used when we have a uterus because estrogen alone is a risk factor for uh, endometrial cancer okay so we have to, uh, to give progesterone to oppose that estrogen okay in, in the case of presence of the uterus but if in case of hysterectomy uh, hysterectomic uh, uterus okay you can give estrogen replacement Therapy. This is the third line of treatment, hormone replacement therapy, okay, estrogen replacement therapy, progestin, and androgen also is a line of hormone replacement therapy, okay, for sexual activity, for example. Non-hormonal, non-hormonal uh, drugs or treatment is the, the final route of treatment of menopause. Now let's start with the important subject, the hormone replacement therapy. I want to start with you uh, studies that discussed uh, this subject. Okay, a lot of studies actually studied the hormone replacement therapy. Okay, the latest uh, two are the WHI uh, study, Women Health Initiatives. Okay, and one million studies, and the conclusion of the studies that hormone replacement therapy will cause increasing in a breast cancer in myocardial infarction pulmonary impetism dvt stroke okay th these all things will increase breast cancer myocardial infarction pe dvt so blood diseases like dvt stroke okay and mi thrombosis of that and pe of course and the breast cancer will increase okay this is the first conclusion the second that hormone replacement therapy will decrease the risk of colorectal cancer osteoporosis and vasomotor symptoms like hot flushes and things i mentioned above okay so this is these are the things that are protected by hormone replacement therapy the colorectal cancer osteoporosis and vasomotor symptoms some studies say that if we take hormone replacement therapy within 10 years of menopause then we have a protection of the heart instead of a risk factor of heart diseases okay we have protection so they are studies every day we have something in you okay but the, the definite thing that the indication of hormone replacement therapy is the only uh, indication to give uh, the, the therapy okay so you can only give hormone replacement therapy if there is an obvious indication because of its risk factors okay what are the indications for hormone replacement therapy 
a premature menopause of course for the age of 40 at least you have to give hormonal replacement therapy to the normal age of menopause 51 okay for vasomotor symptoms that are not tolerated hot flushes depression and these symptoms that if they are not well tolerated then we can move to hormone replacement therapy okay so th these are the two most important indications for hormone replacement therapy don't ever use hormone replacement therapy to prevent for example to prevent osteoporosis or cardiovascular diseases okay never ever this is not an indication for use to hormone replacement therapy what are the contraindications of hormone replacement therapy liver disease is a contraindication for hormone replacement therapy of course thrombophilia is a contraindication dvt any blood diseases okay of clotting of clotting or thrombosis like thrombosis thrombophilia dvt CV, cvs okay pregnancy pregnancy is a contraindication of hormone replacement therapy and now the important thing is breast cancer endometrial cancer ovarian cancer these are absolute contraindications for hormone replacement therapy because in some cases it will induce and uh, increase these cancers okay don't forget we have to give estrogen with the progesterone uh, to protect the endometrial tissue in the case of uh, pre uh, presence of the uterus okay so you can't give estrogen alone or it will cause hyperplasia of the endometrial or even cancer okay what are the side effects of hormone replacement therapy weight gain all patients will come with weight gain okay bleeding sometimes venous thromboembolism okay uh, I keep really repeating myself in this point because very important venous thromboembolism diseases okay so you have to stop hormone replacement therapy four weeks prior to any surgery okay four weeks prior to any surgery you have to stop hormone replacement therapy because it is a risk factor for thromboembolism okay gallstone gallstone is a, is a complication for hormone replacement therapy so give you have to give dermal uh, hormone replacement therapy in case of gallstone not oral okay contraindicated to give oral in case of gallstone give dermal okay so by the way what are the roads of giving estrogen or hormone replacement therapy oral transdermal continuous and you can give it a, a topical okay transvaginal ring uh, for example in the cases of vaginal atrophy we give a, a topical uh, hormone replacement therapy. now let's move after finishing this let's just move to the non-hormonal non hormonal treat okay non hormonal treatment of uh, menopause okay for depression you have to give selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors okay like Paxil for vaginal atrophy you can go give low dose vaginal estrogen and is, it will not be absorbed uh, by systemic circulation so no need to be opposed with progesterone in the case of osteoporosis you have to modify lifestyle by playing uh, exercise with pairing exercise uh, decrease smoking and alcohol okay you have to give calcium vitamin d this phosphonate is the first line of treatment of osteoporosis then we move to hormone replacement therapy okay and you can give a selective estrogen uh, receptors modulators selective estrogen replacement modulator like tamoxifen raloxifen and take care that tamoxifen is a risk factor for uterine cancer okay so and for osteoporosis of course you have to screen at the age of 65 but if you have risk factor then at the age of 60 risk factor of osteoporosis like what like thin patient caucasian smokers drugs like levothyroxine steroids they, they all are risk factors for osteoporosis <coughs> okay so in these cases you have to treat with bisphosphonates okay so this is the non-hormonal treatment of menopause symptoms when we want to use uh, the hormonal treatment hormonal replacement 
for cardiovascular system disease okay of course we have to modify lifestyle to uh, have a good diet to walk and so on okay? thank you very much for watching this is all about menopause hope it was helpful see you in the next video thank you oh there's a point that uh, for osteoporosis screening dixa is the most uh, reliable okay the density of bone thank you very much